Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Willie here at good old want to go fishing slash got to get away. Now, that slash, the reason that's there today is because we're talking about these two motorcycles right here, the Honda Monkey and the Royal Enfield Himalayan. Both of these bikes fall into both of those categories of uh, want to go fishing and got to get away. Uh, I was asked, the question came up, why both bikes? Why, why the Honda Monkey and why the Royal Enfield? Um, there was no real way to answer that other than with this particular video because I was asked more than once and uh, I told him, I said, I'll tell you what, how about I do a video and explain why? Um, first off, we're going to go with the Honda Monkey because that was the first bike that I, that I had or bought while uh, dealing with uh, my YouTube channels. Uh, if you'll go back several, several, many, very backs, way back videos, um, the reason the monkey came into play was at that particular time, I had a 2012 Harley Davidson Switchback. Very cool bike. Uh, it's an Dyna frame, uh, had hard shell fiberglass, uh, hard shell fiberglass back bags on the thing. It had a big, nice fiberglass fairing on the front that kept the wind off of you. Uh, it, it mag wheels, really nice bike. Nice bike, good riding bike, easy to ride bike. But it weighed in pretty good. It was pretty heavy. Heard a pretty heavy bike. Up in the uh, seven to eight hundred, maybe more, once you weigh it down with everything on it. And uh, I enjoyed riding it, but it definitely was not the all-purpose bike. Uh, definitely a road bike. It's really all it was designed for. Be on the road and travel from point A to point B. Getting on the interstates, maybe running 75, 80 miles an hour, if that's what you wanted to do. Um, that's what that bike was for. Now, I've had many Harleys before that okay uh, i had a triumph bonneville a 2003 triumph bonneville all those were great bikes and served their purposes well back in that time frame but if you remember that video uh that uh, started the whole ball rolling uh, i had decided i was going to go fishing that day uh, and i was going to put some small tackle and uh in one of the rear luggage compartments back there and went headed out to Beaver Dam, which is a gravel parking lot that's on a hill. Couldn't find a flat surface anywhere to park the bike and went to stop just to scan the parking lot. Uh, at the very top of the parking lot, I tried my best to find a flat spot. And when I put my foot down, the gravel just rolled right out from under my left foot and I dropped that Harley on its side, destroyed the left rear bag. And uh, it took three of us to stand that bike back up. Fortunately, there were two other people there, a ranger and someone who actually seen what had happened, and they helped me get the bike back up. Now, I've thought on many occasions, you know, what, ha what would have happened if that were me by myself sitting there, nobody around to help in any way, shape, or form? Of course, I probably would have ended up on a cell phone and trying to call somebody to help me out. But uh, I immediately, right there that day, uh, decided... I decided something else had to be done. I wanted to have fun again riding motorcycles and not uh, just be part of the club, I guess you'd say. Um, so what happened was the next day, I changed out the broken fairing, put the window back on it, took the other bag off of it. The bike looked totally fine other than uh, the bags were not on it. And I went to, I went to Winchester, Virginia, uh, the Honda shop up there, Timbrook Honda, uh, they're a powerhouse Honda dealer with nothing but uh, Hondas and traded that Harley in for this monkey right here. Uh, of course, they gave me some, some money t as well because my Harley was worth more than the monkey was. But uh, not to me, it wasn't. To me, this little guy was worth its weight in gold to me. These bikes came out in 2019. I remember when they came out, I said, I would like to get one of those. Those things look fun. I just shook it off in 2019. I just shook it off and said, nah, I've got this Harley. It's all I really need. I don't need this little bike. Little did I know. Little did I know. Um, so what ended up happening was I did my homework on these little guys and decided that this was going to be perfect for what I wanted to do. To fish, to go sightsee, to explore, to get out on some small trails, not heavy stuff. And just bounce around with the thing and enjoy it and have some good time. I set up the back end for holding my fishing poles and my luggage and all of that stuff for stuff, you know, to be able to, to go places and do things. 
where is the downfall to the monkey? That's uh, what a lot of people ask me. The downfall to the monkey is power, okay? This is not a powerful machine. This is nine horsepower at best, and you can do a lot to beef these things up. There's all kinds of big bore kits and stuff like that that you can put on these bikes to make them stronger, bigger, better. Can you do it? Yes, you can. You can make them better than what they are, but not much. It doesn't, it doesn't really make it that much better. And the money that you have to spend to make this bike better, you would end up being going, hey, why don't I just go get a, uh, a Honda CRF Rally 300L, something like that, you know, in that, that realm, uh, a Kawasaki, the 300s or, or whatever, the DRZs. There, there's other bikes that are built more for specific off-road beating and banging and trails and things like that. I don't intend to force this little machine into that life. I'm, I'm not doing that. That's not why I got it. I, it, was, uh, it was basically to be able to take some lighter off-road gravel road trails and stuff like that. This thing will do that. Um, aside from the tires being very more road oriented and the rear shocks, even the front shocks too, but the rear shocks being very bouncy and pogo-ish um, that's the only real issue that mechanically this bike has. It's nine horsepower. It runs about 50 miles an hour uh, in smoothly. You can force this bike up to 55 and 60. I've even done 67 on this bike. Where's the downfall there? 12 inch tires. Okay, this thing has 12 inch tires. So when you start forcing this thing to run 65 miles per hour, the slightest little wiggle it's wiggle it's you're so you're holding on to it with bare knuckle white knuckling this thing um you don't really want to go that fast on tires that small you can again it's capable and you can um let's talk about that word capable real quick the monkey is capable of doing a lot uh there's a couple fellows on youtube right now revzilla uh, uh if you watch these guys they're friends they've been friends for years these two guys took two honda monkeys and did the entire baja 1000 route with these two bikes and only had a flat tire uh, of course there was a lot of cleaning mud and things like that that they had to clean off the bike to get it to get them to keep going but that was their only thing, uh, and I noticed that the tires had been changed. It's not the tires that come on this bike, not by any means. So, capable, yes, but not made for, not designed for that type of abuse at all. Honda has always made good bikes that are capable bikes, and some of them you just don't want to force to do that, and, and I, this is one of those bikes I don't want to force to do that. Um, so. I decided later on down the line, even though I enjoyed this bike and was enjoying going out with it, going fishing and doing that kind of thing, some of the places around here, 55 miles per hour, you know, and 55 miles per hour for long distances um, on the monkey, that's really forcing, and that is, it is forcing this thing to go above and beyond. Um, not that you can't go slower, but if you've been listening to any of the traffic coming past here, um, we're a very, very uh, full area, okay? People are always going somewhere and they're always doing something. And this place is constant, nonstop uh, conveyor belt of vehicles all the time. And a lot of their driving skills and driving habits are not good. Actually, we're not in a very good area for motorcycles, but... I'm not gonna let that stop me. So there you go, that's that part of that. So I wanted something larger to handle longer journeys, um, uh, a little more horsepower to handle mountains and hills and things like that. Uh, so I did my homework and got on and started doing a lot of YouTubing, a lot of, uh, oh man, it just hours and hours and hours of notes, taking notes and writing things down. Uh, I came up with things like the Honda, uh, the CRF 300L or the L Rally or the Kawasaki 250 or the 300s or the DRZs, uh, the XR650 Hondas and things. I started looking at all those bikes. All of those are great bikes. They're all great bikes, but they are extremely high priced in my world for what 
I wanted to spend on one and I wasn't going to make those bikes perform uh, for what they really, really were designed for. Uh, it's kind of like buying a new cell phone or getting a new cell phone. 90% of the population always wants that upgraded newest whatever cell phone, but you never even make the phone do a third of what it's capable of doing. And that's what I would have been doing, buying those other bikes, uh, plus spending a lot more money than I needed to spend. So I started looking at Royal Enfield. The Royal Enfield does everything well, okay? And it, it doesn't do it better than others, and it doesn't do it faster than others, but it performs well on every, every level, on the pavement, on the gravel, and the dirt. This also can be forced like this to do things above and beyond what it's designed to do but i'm not that guy i'm not going to go out here and torture these things because um for, first off nobody's sponsoring me on any of this stuff i bought both of these bikes um everything i put on them i buy i don't you know they don't call me up and say hey yeah well, how would you like to try our newest latest whatever blah blah no sure you know i don't have that i don't have that uh, going on i buy all this stuff so the repairs and all those types of things they're on me so i'm not going to go out here and deliberately do a review of pounding this thing off the sides of mountains and through rivers and drowning it and all that if the time comes where i have to do that to get where i'm going if I can find an alternate route, I'll avoid it and not do that. I'll go the alternate route and save my bike and maybe blow a few minutes or hours, whatever the case may be. I did my homework on the Royal Enfield and found it to be uh, exactly where I wanted to be and price-wise where I wanted to be. So that's why I ended up with the Royal Enfield. So ended up with a monkey over wrecking a Harley. <laughs> Ended up with the Royal Enfield just because of where the monkey stops, the Royal Enfield picks up. I'm going to give you some quick statistics differences here to let you understand the differences between the two bikes. I personally believe that the Royal Enfield is a giant monkey. Okay, and I say that because they're kind of the underdogs. Both of these in their worlds are kind of the underdogs. Most people like the Grom. Uh, a little better than the monkey you know I, it's all in what you grow up with the monkey is a relic basically the monkey is a uh, not really a relic is what i mean to say but is a nostalgic newer version newer version of the original z50 that's basically what this is they just turned it into a 125 or a 124.9 however you want to look at it so that's why i like it i remember these the grom same engine transmission whole nine yards different framework or really the frames the same too but different plastics different look different seat different more for the younger generation basically but anyway let me give you some quick statistics on these two bikes to give you an idea one stops one starts okay the royal enfield is 411 cc's all right that's that's good enough for where i want to be and the monkey is 125 cc's or 124.9 that's how you want to look at it. Royal Enfield is 25 brake horsepower, okay? It, it's just the way it goes. It's 25 brake horsepower, and it has 25.6 pounds feet of torque, meaning it pulls this heavier bike pretty well, okay? It's very torquey. It's not super powerful, but it has torque. It pulls really well. The Monkey is 9 horsepower, okay? It's nine horsepower. Uh, there are riding lawnmowers, of course, that have more horsepower than this Honda Monkey. Um, there are push mowers that almost have the same horsepower as the Honda Monkey. Uh, and though a torquey little machine, once you start weighing down nine horsepower, things start getting just a, a little slower. Um, weight. Royal Enfield's 439 pounds. Unloaded, basically. You start adding bags, front and rear, and then you start adding full tank of gasoline, you're going to start weighing him down. He's going to get heavier, okay? Uh, the Monkey is 232 pounds. Yeah, this thing's nothing. If it falls over, you pick it up. 
That's how it is. It just falls if you pick it up. Um, speaking of which, let's just talk about the gas tanks while we're, we're talking about fuel and, and weight and all. Four gallon gas tank. And this guy usually gets around 75 miles to the gallon Preventing, providing you know you don't have the throttle buried and you're running 70 miles per hour with it. You can get about 75 miles out. So four gallon tank. Monkey, 1.5. Okay, it's just a gallon and a half. That's all it is. And this guy will usually go in between, and it depends on if you got it wound out, 120 miles per tank, 130, some, you know, depending on how hard you're on it. If you're trying to run 50, 55 miles per hour, that's of course gonna drop quite a bit. Um, and let's go up here, seat height. This is something that really I find, I find amusing. Um, the seat height of the Royal Enfield is 31 and a half inches. I'm short, I'm five foot eight. So I am not flat footing it on this bike, but I am up on the balls of my feet and my toes when I stop at stoplights and things with this bike. Now here's the funny thing. This little guy is 30.6 inches. It's only an inch shorter than the Royal Enfield. I kind of find that amusing because I would have really thought that would have been different. And uh, seats, let's just talk about the seats while we're sitting there. Big, fluffy, cushiony, fun seat. Royal Enfield, thin, more custom fitted to your buttocks but not very comfortable. Not the stock seat that comes on it. Not a very comfortable seat. After about 30 to 40, 50 miles, you're moving around a lot, trying to find comfortable positions and things where the monkey, it's just comfortable. Uh, you just sit on it. it. It literally in the Mini Moto has the most comfortable seat you probably have ever sat on. Um, I even added a little backrest to mine uh, against the uh, milk crate back here. And that makes it even better. Oh, it's just a lean back, and oh, it's just amazing. Um, let's see, what else can we go to here? Four-speed transmission, okay, four-speed transmission. Uh, that's why you get wound out at 50 miles an hour, 55. She's pretty wound up tight, and uh, the little piston in there is just screaming. So uh, five-speed transmission in the Royal Enfield. Bigger wheels. Uh, and since we're going to talk about, let's talk about that real quick. Uh, you're looking at the Royal Enfield has a 21 inch front wheel, has a 17 inch rear wheel. The Monkey has two 12 inch wheels. Okay, so there's a gear ratio difference there with fifth gear in this one. You can get up 65, 70 miles an hour. Uh, would I suggest strolling at 70 miles per hour with this thing? Not necessarily. Um, I, I didn't get it for that. I got it because I wanted to be able to run 60 and 65 without it sounding like the monkey, you know, it was going to throw the piston between the forks like somebody kicking a field goal. I uh, didn't want to have that problem. Um, let's see, both are disc brakes. Disc brakes all the way around on both bikes, hydraulic disc brakes. And they're both fuel injected, which I find really cool. Um, the fuel injection on the monkey and the fuel injection on the uh, Royal Enfield sometimes do the same identical thing. When you first fire it up, it'll run for a little while and then cut off, and it's warming up just how it is. Um, the infield does it more than the monkey does, but they are both fuel injected bikes. So don't have that to worry about as the, uh, if you say you're in Colorado and you're going up and down through the mountains and your, your height is changing as you go into the valleys and up into the mountains or whatever, that fuel injection is gonna take care of the problem where a carburetor you'd be adjusting or coughing and sputtering and having to deal with all of that. Now, will I ever go to Colorado? I'm hoping so, it'd be fun. And to be honest with you, I'd like to take the monkey because they're all gravel roads uh, for the most part, uh, some water crossings and things like that. But I actually would have a really good time on this little guy right here going through those mountains and stuff. Uh, what else do we want to talk about here? Uh, I guess in front of me, ground clearance. Okay, something else that I find a little bit amusing here. Uh, the Royal Enfield's ground clearance is 8.6 inches. So from the bottom of the skid plate, which it does have a skid plate, the monkey does not. You can buy one for the monkey, but it does not have one. Um, it's 8.6 inches on the Royal Enfield. It is 6.3 inches on the monkey. It's really not that bad considering the size of the bike, but you do have to be very careful with the monkey because its exhaust does come out and go down and go under the bike. 
so your exhaust can easily get damaged uh, if you want to go into some areas with some higher rocks or ridges, levels, or jumping, stair-stepping kind of thing, and you end up slamming your exhaust into uh, a rock and squeezing off that flow, you might be out there cutting your exhaust off of it to, in order to be able to get where you're going. So again, that's if you're into forcing the bike to do things it really doesn't need to do. Uh, let's see, what else do we got on here? I think that's everything except price. Okay, when I, when I bought the Monkey, when I traded my Harley in and got the Monkey, um, the Monkey was $39.99. I still have the, the advertisement for this bike, this very bike where I went and bought it at Timbraconda, um, and it was $39.99. I wound up getting $1,200 back um, in return for my Harley. Could have got more, but having that fiberglass bag destroyed, and of course Harley only made those bags for that bike, so it wasn't like you could just go get more bags you had to buy the ones that were specific to that harley so that took a little bit of the money off of the price because they were going to buy bags for it to be able to sell it so there you go 39.99 and i think it was 42 something out the door or whatever when i got the bike royal enfield i uh, just bought it in january um, the bike was 52.99 and what i really really loved about the price of this bike was the fact that it doesn't have any massive markups okay it wasn't uh like honda for example the markup on the bike when you went to go buy a six thousand dollar honda you could leave with an eight thousand dollar honda just because of all the price additions and add-ons and all that stuff this bike was 52.99 i came home with it for 59. 59 17 if i'm not mistaken or 19 17 or 19 hey what's two bucks that's what one of the things i really loved about this bike was the price and the fact that it is basically a do-all kind of bike that's what i was looking for now let's talk about the build quality of these two bikes um they're very different honda is very uh I would say they're slightly meticulous about their fit and finish of the bike. The paint job, the paint scheme, the striping, the, the fit put together, every, very well put together bike. Very well put together bike. Um, it's just, it's very much, this is like the Swiss army knife of motorcycles okay and, and i say that because i'm going to compare two things here this is kind of the swiss army knife the more refined blades chrome finishes tweezers scissors that kind of thing uh, a very refined and well put together bike you don't see any flaws or mess ups really on the bike um, this is kind of like the leatherman or gerber of the knife world still you got two knives that can do the same thing one just is really nice looks very nice and looks great and is more refined this is more your gerber leatherman do it all workhorse scarred up beat it you know that type of thing uh, that's going to do everything like i said do everything well you know if this were a tool it'd be a hammer you know you just beat it bang it that type of thing. Um, I, the big question was, which do I like best? Both these bikes had purposes. But when I walk out the door and want to get on something to go ride because I want to go ride, I get on the monkey. Uh, it's more fun to me. It's more fun. Uh, and it, it, that's what this bike was for. It was fun. It was a fun bike. And it's my fishing bike. So if I do go fishing, you know, it's set up to do that. This bike has a purpose. This is a travel bike. This is a distance bike. This is a camping bike. Uh, that This bike's not set up to fish in any way, shape, or form. I would have to take smaller tackle, a little tackle, uh, like my travel rods and stuff like that for this bike. Um, it, it, that's its purpose. Uh, when I ride this bike, it is fun to ride. It's very fun to ride bike and a very easy bike to ride. A little top heavy because you're also dealing with four gallons of gas, you know, up here but a very fun bike to ride. Um, I really enjoy it. I love the gauge cluster, the window. Uh, it even has the tripper unit on it, which I had used a couple times, and it seems to work fine. Uh, the tripper unit, if those of you are not familiar, you can hook that 
to your tele to your telephone and it's kind of like a gps but without a lot of the speed limits and you're not seeing the roads and all that stuff it just kind of tells you when to turn right when to turn left that type of thing it gives you that type of thing so it I mean, it does work though um so everything about this bike is purposeful everything that's why i got it it had a purpose now whether i would have bought a honda a suzuki a kawasaki or whatever it would have had purpose it would have had a purpose where this one at first this bike was just all about fun that's all it was it, it was that uh it was that labrador puppy waiting to greet you at the end of the day when you get home from work hey! and that's the way this thing was same thing it started out that way um but now it's becoming more uh fun and useful um and it will be become more useful as I buy other things for it. Next thing being tires. Okay, we can talk about the tires real quick if you want more off-road oriented tire on the uh, on the Royal Enfield uh, roadworthy slash off-road. Now, they're, don't get me wrong, you're not mud bogging these tires, sand, none of that. But these are good on gravel roads. They're good for that type of thing. Some dirt, some thin sand, that type of thing. But other than that, you're going to have to get more aggressive. The tires on the Monkey, they're balloon-like and more road map grooved and do great on pavement. They're great on pavement. You get on a gravel road and the whole time it's wanting to to track all over the place like you're you're floating or you're trying to you're trying to ride it in a kid's bounce house. You know, that's that's the way it feels. But that's going to change. I've already changed the rear shocks, so I will change the tires too. The Royal Enfield is more of a uh, add-on as you need kind of bike. It is. Um, I got luggage on it already. I do have space on the back for another type of luggage, and I'm going to get the pannier style bars for the side, as well as get the small engine guards to go on the front. But all this stuff takes time, and replace that seat because they make a touring version of this seat that's supposed to be more comfortable and it's not very expensive it's like 109 bucks so i will get that not going to replace the one the the uh, passenger one because i really don't ever have a passenger so that's not that big a deal um but i will replace that so purposeful bike fun slash purposeful bike so that's how it became uh these bikes fit both categories of want to go fishing and got to get away um because they both do all of that uh, i can go fishing on this i can get away on this i can go fishing on this which is more prominently what it is uh, and i can commute back and forth to work on this uh, so it's it's fishing slash gotta get away it's both of them so anyway that was the reasoning behind these two bikes that's where they came from first off and foremost the prices were good that's where i really was looking they both are capable of doing a lot even though I'll never push them to their limits. Um, this one, however, does have some trips in its future coming up. So does this one, as a matter of fact. Um, I'm actually debating on going to Nags Head, North Carolina, on the little monkey, um, taking the back ways, of course, and go out and see the beach and the lighthouse and Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, where the Wright brothers flew and all that fun stuff. I think that will be fun, and it's not that far away for the little bike. This one, however, has got some camping ahead of it. Um, gonna go maybe up to the Shenandoah Parkway, some things like that, and buzz around up there. And uh, so this summer, there's things coming for these bikes. So if you're looking to see these two bikes get out and do more, it's coming, it's coming. So anyway, that's, that is my description of the two bikes, my reasoning behind the two bikes. I hope that the fellows that asked me the questions about why these two bikes, those questions were answered. That's them. And I hope that this microphone's been working the whole time and uh, the traffic going by didn't drown me out completely. That's a lot of talking, and I'm sorry about that. I duly apologize. There's a lot of statistics and a lot of me not just being me. But in order to get my point across, I had to... Uh, Calm it down a bit, if you know what I'm saying. You down with that? All right. I have had a cup of coffee this morning. Yes, I have. It's starting to wear off. No, it's not. So anyway, I'm going to go in now and get me some lunch and kick back for a little bit with the family. Uh, today is actually Memorial Day. 
So happy Memorial Day to all of you out there who have served in the armed forces in some way, shape or form. Uh, we duly appreciate what you do. And for those of them who are, not, who are no longer with us, we really, really, really appreciate what you've done and did. And uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you next time on Wanna Go Fishing slash Gotta Get Away.